What's the deal, y'all? This your man King Eric the Media Assassin coming at y'all with another video. Subscribe, hit the like button for me. And yo, I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers with this video here, but I'm speaking on the behalf of King Eric Productions. This is my opinion, and this is not a reflection of my team. So, this is all on me. And I'm going to get to the root of the tutor. And why I feel that WAC 100 is jealous of Tupac Shakur and Nipsey Hussle. A.K.A. Will O'Neal 100. So let's get to it, man. Notice this here. You notice with Nipsey, we're now focusing on the same type of hit pieces that could destroy or deflame somebody's character. Now at first, he started off with, oh, he ain't a legend. He started trying to keep it music. Now, he saw it that it wasn't really gaining the traction. Now, so it's like, okay, I'm going to take it even further. I'm going to dismerge this man's whole dignity. So now, this is where the extremism comes. When they attack a man's sexuality. Because when you put the snitch label on there, then you put the, the, the rapist label, like he did with Tupac, then you put the gay label. That's what these agents of chaos does. And see, if you really look at it, Tupac and Nipsey are very similar more than people think. They're both community oriented. They both have built respect from their craftsmanship. They both are intelligent and they both are pro, have pro-black militants about themselves. And what people don't know is a lot of Nipsey's rhymes is influenced by the ISIS papers, Dr. Sebi, Malcolm X, the Garveyism. Nipsey read a lot. And you check out a lot of the books that he has run he's read to understand business, understand warfare, understand his own people. And most importantly, the women gravitated to Tupac and they gravitated to Nipsey. And this is what hit hit Whack 100 the hardest. They're both respected by known hitters within the gang culture. Not for putting in work, not for killing anybody, but they're pretty much considered certified just because of their musical contributions. That's what it all boils down to. And you see his artist game, he's trying. He got tattoos of Tupac. Saying he loved Tupac. Now he got a beard like Nipsey. He's rapping like Nipsey. Got cornrows like Nipsey. But he's not Nipsey. He's not going to be Pop. And so. And knowing all those qualities that these men have possessed. It infuriates a lot of people. Because you notice this with, Nip, with Tupac at first. At first, he started off light, where he started talking about Tupac was in a gangster. That's fine. People were like, okay, he never said he was a gangster. He was a revolutionary. That's fine. Then he doubled down and went further with it, disrespected the man, calling him a rapist. Then he's calling him gay. Then he's calling, disrespected his mom. I don't know how y'all niggas even forget, forgot about all that. Big shout out to my... My late homie guys over calling this sucker out on that, man, because a lot of niggas just let that slide. So, that's what Ages of Chaos does. You, you want to hit them in ways where you want to really dirt up their memory. You don't hit them with just you disagreeing how they are when it comes to their craftsmanship. You don't disagree with them when it comes to their speeches. You got to hit them with a character assassination. And that's where this other BS come. So. He's tried it with Tupac. He tried to dirty up his name. He tried to put the. The gay label up there. He tried to put the snitch label up there. He tried to put the not gangster label up there. He tried to basically. He was a. He was a. Um, out of tainer claiming gang banging or whatever he wants. So. Now he's doing the same thing with Nipsey Hussle. At first it started light. It started with music. Now it started, oh, he's a snitch. Now it's, 
he's gay. The ages is like, okay, we're going to double down and really destroy this man's image. Because they don't want the image of us remembering Nipsey for being an entrepreneur, for being someone to inspire millions to build their own businesses, to build their own stores, to use their music to, to control the narrative and not only what they're putting out, but also owning your own masses. Because he talked a lot about that. And they bring guys like Wack 100, they give them a bag to go out there and say these things. So now people have a dirty memory of Nipsey, according to a, a lot of them. A lot of what the internet streets is saying. So now there's alleged tape up there. And it just goes to show you, man, like the limps that jealous people do. Because let's be real, man. What is this guy really known for? Every time I hear of a whack 100, it's always something involved with negativity, man. It's always him bullying somebody. It's always him calling out somebody. It's always him telling somebody a snitch, calling up somebody a buster. Every single day. Nothing is good coming out of this guy. Nothing, like, I never heard anything positive about this dude since I first started hearing about him in 2017. And I remember I even made a post in 2017, and I, it popped up in my Facebook memories. Like, yo, Wack is going to ruin Game's career. And he's really done it. Because think about it. I said this before. All the relationships that he built, they're not going to deal with him no more. They don't want to deal with Wack no more. But see, this is another thing. Wack learned from Suge on the art of manipulation. Because Suge used to do this type of stuff, according to what a lot of people said, like Danny Boy and Joel and on the Art of Dialogue show. He used to play a lot of those manipulation games, but he never went online. You never knew about this till later on. So, the dangerous thing of what this Wack 100 guy doing is that he took those what he learned from Suge about playing the puppet master and manipulating people, and he's taking it to different territories. Now you got New York mad at you. Now you got Texas dudes mad at you. Now you got West Coast dudes want your head. Now you got down South people want your head. You made Trick Daddy people mad. You done made um Master P people mad. You done made T.I.'s people mad. You done pissed off the Crips. Big U said. Like, where is game gonna go? Who can he work with now at this point? Because nobody gonna want to deal with whack. You done, you done made enemies in New York City. You done made enemies everywhere. So how is game going to even get collabs now? All those collabs that he was getting before, he's not going to get anymore. Cause of, just because of the bridges that he's burning. And when, if he drops that Eminem diss, it's a dub. He's straight kamikaze himself out the game. No pun intended. But this is what it all roots down for, man. When you see brothers with these accolades and they get most respect from street niggas that these guys idolize, that's when you start seeing the sideways talk. Renaissance men like Nipsey Hussle and Tupac are the prototypes of what a lot of black men tried to try to aspire to be. Like they fulfill all of those voids and they checked all them boxes. The educated thug. With street credibility, with proper respect, with knowledge of self, and maintain their dignity to death. Guys like Wack 100 and other people that get online and say these crazy things about Nipsey and Pop can't relate to that time period. They can't relate to that mentality. So what they have to do, they got to go on YouTube and slander them. So... That's exactly what it boils down to. That dude is jealous of Tupac and Nipsey for those same reasons. Like, those guys left their mark on this planet. For the world. It goes beyond gang violence. It goes beyond gang banging. It goes to the world. And William O'Neill 100, I bet he gets salty <laughs> to this day. 
he gets salty to this day when he hear Tupac lyrics coming out of his house from his probably his 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 family or whatever. So that's exactly what it's all about, man. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Subscribe, hit the like button. I'm about to go. Check out the interview that we about to put down. I got the interview with Mims tomorrow night. I'm gonna upload the K Reno and I'm gonna upload the J um the J D episode this Saturday and Sunday. So holler at me.